love the Lord one more time. This is indeed the day that the Lord has made. And I don't know about you, but I am rejoicing and glad in it. Praise the Lord. Praise God in his sanctuary. Praise him in his mighty heavens. Praise him for his acts of power. Praise him for his surpassing greatness. Praise him with the sounding of the trumpet. Praise him with harp and lyre. Praise him with tremble and dancing. Praise him with the strings and pipe. Praise him with the clash of the cymbal. Praise him with loud, resounding cymbal. Let everything, let everything, let everything that has breath praise the Lord. This is your call to worship. Let us pray. Oh Lord, our Lord, how excellent is thy name in all the earth. Oh God, you're excellent. You woke us up this morning. You're excellent. You've kept a roof over our heads. You're excellent. You allow us to move freely and have a sound mind. Lord, you're excellent because you made ways out of no way for us. You're excellent, Lord. Because you've forgiven us, Lord, you're excellent. Because you always open doors that sometimes we can't even see. So we pause this morning and say, thank you, Lord, for your excellence. We understand that if it had not been for you who was on our side, we don't know where we would be. You're excellent, Lord God. So we just thank you this morning for the opportunity to come together one more time. We thank you for the preached word that will go forth this morning, oh God. And we ask even now that you open our hearts, our minds, and our spirits to receive your word. Bless us and keep us and we will be forever grateful and honored to give you all the praise it is in Jesus' name that we pray in every heart said amen
again, brothers and sisters. It's so good to see you this morning. We greet you from Wheat Street Baptist Church. We are the church in the heart of Atlanta with Atlanta in its heart. And so we greet you virtually and it's so good to see each and every one of you this morning. We invite you to go ahead and welcome one another in the chat. Tell somebody good morning and that you're glad to see them. Oh, how good and how pleasant it is when brothers and sisters come together, sing together, pray together, shout together in unity. It's so good to see each of you this morning. worship experience. It's giving time and someone ought to give God a hand clap of praise for the opportunity to give. We understand that giving is an expression of our worship and we don't want to take any opportunity to worship God for granted. So I invite you now to go ahead and prepare your gifts you may use the Easy Tithe app. You may go onto our website and look for the ways that you can give, or you may mail your gifts directly to the church. And we understand as we prepare to render unto God what already belongs to Him, we understand that God loves, I said God loves a cheerful giver. Let us now give back to God. Amen. Oh God, we thank you for these gifts. We thank you for the giver, oh God. We thank you for faith to understand that giving is a part of our worship. Now we ask, oh God, that you bless these gifts, that you increase these gifts, that you multiply these gifts so that they may be you to build your kingdom. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen.
Good morning, Queen Street family, friends, and guests. I have the privilege of presenting the Preacher of the Hour this morning in the name of Reverend Brendan A. Jenkins. Reverend Jenkins was born in a Marine base uh, in Camp Lejeune, North Carolina, and raised in Houston, Texas. He's married with two daughters, and he has served as pastor of the historic Old Friendship Baptist Church, Missionary Baptist Church, located in Marietta, Georgia, from 2010 to 2015. And he has also served as the pastor of the Rocky Ford, the Rock Baptist Church, located in Dallas, Georgia. He has served as the president of the Congress of Christian Education uh, for a Kennesaw Missionary Baptist Association between 2012 and 2014. He is currently serving as the Zone, v, Zone 4 Vice President for the 7th District of Georgia Missionary Baptist Convention of Georgia. 2018, he matriculated at Sanford University, Beeson Divinity School. Uh, he's working on his doctorate of ministry in Christian preaching. His thesis is developing a proactive paradigm to aid churches in addressing conflict through preaching, teaching, and Christian conflict resolution. The next voice you will hear will be that of Reverend Brendan A. Jenkins. Hear ye him. It's good to be here at the Wheat Street Baptist Church one more time. It's good to be able to be in the house of the Lord. For he said, wherever there are two or three gathered together in my name, there I am in the midst. And so we thank God for the presence of the Holy Spirit that leads God, God and direct us along the way. Beloved, I greet you in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, the only name by which man might be saved from the penalty of sin. I greet you in the name of him that said, and I, if I be lifted up, I'll draw all men unto me. Good morning, Wheat Street Baptist Church, the heart of Atlanta. It's good to be here one more time. I want to thank Deacon Hodges for your continued steadfast direction and support as we preach the gospel here at Wheat Street to this great congregation, the leadership, the deacon's ministry, and all those who are part of this great church family. It's good to be here. For Wheat Street has been a beacon of light for the cause of Christ down through the years. And so I count it a privilege to present the gospel of Christ this morning. And brothers and sisters, I just believe that praying, preaching, and praise go hand in hand. And if you will pray with me, I'll do the preaching and God will get the praise. And I pray that you would right now join me in a word of prayer. Lord, I stretch my hands to thee. And no other help I know. If thou withdraw thyself from thee, for whether shall I go? What did thy only son endure before I took my breath? What pain would labor to secure our souls from endless death? Eternal God, our Father, we're gathered here at Wheat Street worshiping you in spirit and in truth. We're reminded of the life, love, and legacy, and leadership of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Now, Lord, we pray in the name of Jesus that your word will fall fresh this morning to the end that you are glorified, to the end that your people are edified, and someone who doesn't know you in the free pardon of their sins will come running saying, we'll hear your servant's voice. And even right where they are, 
will declare you as Savior and Lord. It is in the perfect and matchless name of Jesus Christ we pray. And the church said, Amen. Amen. Luke chapter 4, starting at the 14th verse, and we find these words. And Jesus returned in the power of the Spirit into Galilee. And there went out a fame of him through all the region about. And he taught in their synagogues, being glorified of all. And he came to Nazareth, where he had been brought up. And as his custom was, as his custom was, he went into the synagogue on the Sabbath day and stood up for to read. And there was delivered unto him the book of the prophet Isaiah. And when he had opened the book, he found the place where it was written, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, because he hath anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to preach deliverance to the captives, and recovering of sight to the blind, to set at liberty them that are bruised, to preach, to preach, to preach the acceptable year of the Lord. And he closed the book, and he gave it again to the minister and sat down, and the eyes of all them that were in the synagogue were fastened upon Jesus. And he began to say unto them, This day is this scripture fulfilled in your ears. What a powerful declaration from a prophetic preacher. Not one miracle has been done. And Jesus declares, This day is this scripture fulfilled in your ears. And I want to share with us this morning from the subject being Bible based, being Bible based, living a life on purpose, living a life on purpose. Uh, being Bible based literally means that the Bible dictates how I deal with the demands of life. For the Bible tells us there is nothing new under the sun. All the issues we face in life can be covered in this book. Jesus is the perfect example of living a Bible-based life. John's bio of Jesus declares, John 1 and 1, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by him, him being Jesus, and without him was not anything made that was made. In him was life, and the life was the light of men. And the light shineth in darkness, and the darkness comprehended it not. Here it is, verse 14 says, And the Word was made flesh, and dwelt among us, and we behold his glory, the glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. Examining the life of Jesus through the lens of Jesus. Examining life through the lens of Jesus. How after he was baptized and God declared, this is my beloved son in whom I'm well pleased. Right there, God put a target on Jesus' back. God highlighted his life. Soon thereafter, he was tempted, tested by Satan in an effort to undermine, destroy God's plan and purpose for Jesus. All oh, brothers and sisters, but Jesus being the word incarnate, 
literally the word in the flesh, repeatedly declared, it is written. Jesus had the word embedded in him that equipped him to resist the trials and the tests and the temptations of life. And so we find in our lesson this morning, being Bible-based, living life on purpose. Our scripture says Jesus walked into the temple and he opened up the book of the prophet Isaiah, read the scripture and declared, this day is this scripture fulfilled. For Jesus was the word walking and talking. He was the word. And he said before he did it, he said it's already been done. Let's look at this text closer. After being tempted, tested, Jesus went to the temple, to the church. To what? For what reason? To renew his strength. The Bible says, as his custom. Oftentimes people say, well, you don't have to go to church to be saved. And that's true. You don't have to go to church to be saved, but if you're saved, you'll go to church. Our brothers and sisters, we gain strength from coming to church. Uh, we gain inspiration from coming to church. We gain motivation and determination from coming to church. And in these times of COVID, we realize how important that tie that binds us together in Christian love is. We realize how important it is when we can come together and fellowship one with another. We realize how important the text when it says, don't forsake the fellowship of like beloved believers. It is at the church that the word of God is planted in our thoughts, in our theories, and in our theology. It's at the church that the word is embedded in our DNA. It is at the church that the word is wired to our heart, mind, and soul. Wheat Street, be not dismayed, whatever betide, know that God will take care, <coughs> will take care of his church. The church will never fail. I said the church will never fail. For Jesus declared, did he not upon this rock I build my church and the gates of Hades and the gates of hell or even COVID will not prevail against it. Jesus came into the temple, opened up Torah, the Old Testament, and revealed the plan and purpose for his life. Isaiah, more than any other Old Testament prophet, talked about the coming of the Christ. And so it's not by mistake that Jesus would be reading from the book of Isaiah. He lays out his plan and purpose, and it was already recorded in the text. Oh, brothers and sisters, that's good news right there. That's good news for our life's purpose is also found in the text, in the word of God. When we get the word in us and we allow the Holy Spirit to lead us, point us and direct us toward our destiny, we will fulfill it. So here we are. In order to live on purpose, we must stay in the will, in the way and in the word of God. And stay in the house of God. Uh, Brother Rick Warren wrote a great book entitled The Purpose Driven Life, in which he provides an elusive path to discovering your divine purpose. 
our Lord and Savior Jesus provides a very simple but powerful path for life lived on purpose. God declares through the prophet Jeremiah, from your mother's womb, I already knew you. Even before, brothers and sisters, we were born, God already knew us, for he made us, did he not, in our image and in our likeness. God has equipped us with the gifts, the talents, and the abilities which will lead us to fulfilling our divine purpose. So when God leads you, don't get worried about how you're going to do it because God gives no vision without making provision. He tells us in order to tap into our divine purpose, we must first seek ye first, huh? The kingdom of God and his righteousness. Uh, that's another way of saying you must be Bible based. Uh, the question is this morning, the question is asked, what does it profit a man to gain the whole world and lose his soul? I don't know about you, but Deke, you just told me you went to a, a home going service. And I doubt if you saw a U-Haul connected to at the hearse. You can't take it with you. What profit a man or woman to gain the whole world and lose his soul? We find this as one of the examples that Jesus gives. Jesus was asked by the young rich man, what must I do to inherit the kingdom of God? Jesus looked at him very firmly and said, keep the commandments. And he said to Jesus, I've been keeping the commandments since I was a young lad. And Jesus looked at him very sternly and said, sell all you have and follow me. The young man walked away. He had sold his soul for a few coins. Brothers and sisters, to fulfill God's plan for our lives and for our lives, we must first cultivate a personal relationship with God through his son, Jesus Christ, and allow the Holy Spirit to lead God, God, and direct us through the valley, huh? Amen. Through the valley of the shadow of death, through a COVID condition, all the things that we face in life, God will lead us through it if we allow the Holy Spirit to be our guide. Allow the Holy Spirit to lead us, not only through the valley of the shadow of death, but allow the Holy Spirit to lead us in the path of righteousness for his name's sake. And that's how we fulfill God's divine purpose by allowing the Lord. When we say he's Lord, huh? That means he's head. That means he's in charge. He, he is not my co-pilot, but he is my pilot. He, he leads me and he guides me in the way to go. By allowing the Lord to lead, guide, guard, and direct us through all our days. <coughs> That's how we fulfill our purpose. Let's look at Jesus' personal mission and purpose. Since we say that we are Christians, is that right? And to be a Christian means that you're Christ-like. You live like Christ. You talk like Christ. You walk like Christ. There is a Christ-like disposition within. Scripture says he went to the temple 
as was his custom. His custom was to go to church, to go to the temple, to the synagogue, and declare. Jesus goes in and he's given the book of the prophet Isaiah, and he opens it up, and he declares these words. He says, the spirit of the Lord is upon me because he had anointed me. Hmm? He has empowered me. He has called me to preach the gospel to who? To the poor. Not just, not just those who are economically poor, but those who don't know him in the free pardon of their sins to preach the good news. Jesus first tells us, once the word of God has been embedded hmm, in you and you have been tried, tested, and passed the test, the Spirit of the Lord, which is the Holy Spirit, will lead you to your divine purpose. We must be Holy Spirit led. The Holy Spirit will lead you to that purpose, that plan that God has for your life. You've got to wait on the Lord and be directed by the Holy Spirit. Jesus declares, the Spirit of the Lord is upon me, for he has anointed me. He anointed him at his baptism. The Bible says that the heavens opened up. The Spirit, like a dove, came down upon him, and God said, this is my beloved Son, in whom I'm well pleased. He anointed me, ordained me, prepared me to preach. That's what Jesus says. He's giving his mission statement. He's giving his plan and his purpose. Jesus was a preacher, huh? He came declaring the good news gospel. That the wages, huh? The wages of sin is death. But he didn't stop there. He said, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ. He came declaring I am the way to get to the Father. I am the way, the truth, and the light. No man or woman cometh to the Father but by me. Jesus came declaring, as long as I am in the world, huh? I am a light unto the world. Jesus came declaring that I have come that you and you and me might have life and have it more abundantly. That's what Jesus was about. He was about bringing joy to the world. He was about being a light in the midst of darkness. John F. Kennedy declared, we are called not to strike the darkness, but to be a light in the midst of the darkness. Not only was Jesus a preacher with a mission to set the captives free. And that's a sermon in and of itself. He was also a teacher. He declared, I came not to destroy the law, but to fulfill it. Jesus came to establish a clear path from heaven, from a path to heaven, a clear path from earth to heaven. As a teacher, he came to show us huh, a more perfect way. The way of Christ, I said the way of Christ is not harsh, is not burdensome. It does not put us in a straitjacket. He said he came to set the captives free. For he declared, did he not, my yoke is easy. You know a yoke? They put it around the cow. My yoke is easy and my burden is light. 
praise his holy name. Jesus loves people. And I say that in the present tense, not in the past tense. He loves, even today, he loves people. He came to heal the brokenhearted, huh? To give sight to the blind. And he did that, literally and figuratively. The Bible records one of his miracles. He once put spittle or saliva on a blind man's, blind man's eye and told him to go and wash in the pool of Siloam. And the Bible records that he came back seeing. And when the religious zealots, the religious folk attempted to criticize the miracle of Christ, the blind man declared, all I know is I once was blind, but now I see. Jesus was a doctor who never lost a patient. He healed the sick, raised his best friend Lazarus from the dead. Jesus fulfilled his divine purpose. Jesus so intimately understood this journey of living life on purpose that he said, I must be about my father's business. Uh, he declared, I must work the work of him that sent me when, while it is day for night cometh when no man can work. And he said, he said, as long as I'm in the world, I'm a light unto the world. And that ought to be our, our cry. As long as I'm in the world, I want to be a light unto the world. Uh, Jesus provided us with a, a parable to show us the importance of living and fulfilling our purpose. Jesus tells a story, and if you were in Sunday school just a little while, I know you know the story. He tells a story of the talents. One person was given five talents or gifts. Another person was given two gifts and another one, one gift. The giver of gifts returned to do an audit of how effective the gifts had been used. And let me just parenthetically pause and say, you do know that there will be a day of auditing. And we all will have to give an account of what we've done with the gift that God has given us. There will be a day when we will be judged on how effective a steward we have been over this life. And on the day of judgment, God will be the judge of the deeds we've done in this life. Satan will be the primary prosecutor. And thanks be to God, Jesus Christ will be our lawyer and advocate. The question I have today is, will you be able to call up any witnesses? Will you be able to call up someone that can testify on your behalf that while you were in this world, that they came to Christ because of your testimony, that your life drew them to Christ? Or will we seek to ride on the coattails of Jesus? Jesus tells us, does he not take up your cross and follow me daily? And so, brothers and sisters, the giver of gifts calls the one forward who was given the five talents and saw that he had been a good steward and maximized his gift 
making good use of his talents. And the giver of gifts declares, well done, thy good and faithful servant, enter into the joy of the Lord. Uh, he assessed the one given the two talents and found that he had doubled his talents as well. And he said, well done, thy good and faithful servant. Enter into the joy of thy salvation. Before we go on to the one talent, this point is worth noting. The one who, were, who was faithful over two talents, huh? Receive the same blessing as the one who was given the five talents. Uh, that tells us don't worry about the gifts and talents and abilities given to others. Just focus and maximize your gift. Focus on fulfilling your divine purpose and your journey. Uh, then he turns to the person given the one talent. And the scripture allows us to look into the mind, the mens rea of the unfaithful steward. The Bible's, he, he hardened his heart and became disobedient to the will of God. Uh, how many of us know that disobedience derails us from our destiny? But God delights in our obedience to his divine will. Uh, this person buried his gift. He did not use his gift to glorify God. God didn't even get any interest on his gift. As a result, I said as a result, he did not experience the joy of the Lord. Uh, when this life is over, when I've taken my last breath, I want to hear him say, servant, well done. Uh, beloved, people are burying their gifts even today. Burying gifts by not properly applying the word of God to their lives. Burying their gifts through the use of drugs, crime, and gang violence. Burying their gifts through lying, stealing, and killing. Burying their gifts by not living a Bible-based, Christ-centered, Holy Spirit-led, and mission-bound life. Instead of, the, instead of this servant burying his gift, instead of this servant bearing his gift, he could have declared this little light of mine I'm going to let it shine. Jesus recognized that the journey with Jesus would be difficult. And he declared in this life, you shall have trials and tribulations. Even though we will have tribulations, know that his yoke is easy and his burden is light. Uh, Jesus says, but even during the tribulation, <clears throat> be of good cheer, for I have already overcome the world. He says, be of good cheer. The game is already won. Uh, be of good cheer. You've got the victory in Christ Jesus. Uh, Jesus said, be of good cheer. Though the storms keep on raging, be of good cheer. Though weeping may endure for night, be of good cheer. Uh, Jesus says, be of good cheer. And know that no weapon formed against you shall ever prosper, for we are more than a conqueror through our big brother Jesus. Uh, be of good cheer for Christ has overcome the world Jesus says be of good cheer for one Friday they hung him high be of good cheer they stretched him wide be of good cheer 
for you. He hung and died for you and for me. He hung, bled, and died for you and for me. But I hear Jesus declaring, be of good cheer. For early, early, one Sunday morning, he got up declaring, all power is in my hand. Scripture says, as Jesus took his last breath, he said, it is finished. And brothers and sisters, when this journey of life is complete, will you be able to say, it is finished? I finished my course. When this journey of life is complete, will you be able to say, as the first African-American Supreme Court Justice Thurgood Marshall said, at the close of his life, he said, I did what I could with what I had. Will you be able to say, as Dr. Martin Luther King said, he said, if I can help somebody as I travel along, if I can cheer somebody with a word of song, if I can show somebody who's traveling wrong, then my living will not be in vain. If I can do my duty, or oh, praise his name as a Christian ought. If I can teach salvation to a world once wrong, my living will not be in vain. When this life is all over, I want to be able to say, as the Apostle Paul said, I fought a good fight. I finished my course. I've kept the faith. Henceforth there is laid up for me a crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, shall give unto me, or praise his name, shall give unto me, but not only unto me, but to all of them that love is appearing. Brothers and sisters, live a Bible-based, Christ-centered, Holy Spirit-led, and mission-bound life. Live your life on purpose and with purpose. So that at the close of your life, you can say, it is finished. I have no regrets. Doors of the church are open. We extend the invitation to discipleship. You can come by letter, Christian experience, candidate for baptism, you can be as the man said, I came to Jesus just as I was. I was weary, worn, and sad. I found in him a resting place, and he has made me glad. We extend the invitation. Jesus keep me near the cross there's a precious fountain free to Tell my wrath 
tortured soul shall find rest beyond the God, we thank you for your word. Your word is a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our pathway. We must read it to be wise. And we must believe it to be saved. And so, Lord, we pray that your word has touched the hearts of your people. Oh, Lord, that it might lead us, guide us, and direct us in the way that you'd have us go. Oh, Lord, we pray that if some person has heard your word and don't know you're in the free pardon of their sins, well, Lord, right there where they are right now as they hear my humble voice, that they will confess with their mouth and believe in their heart the Lord Jesus. They shall be saved. And so we thank you in advance for what you're going to do, Lord. We thank you, Heavenly Father, for this great church you have established, Wheat Street Baptist Church. Oh, Lord, let them know that they have not seen their best days. Lord, let them know that you'll never leave this church nor forsake it. Let them know, Lord, that you're with them even during this COVID season, Lord. Let your Holy Spirit comfort this congregation right now, Lord. Guide them in the way that they, you would have them go. Thank you, Lord, in advance. You said, ask, seek, and knock, and doors will be open. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Let the church say, Amen. God bless you, beloved. It's been a joy and a privilege to be with you, Wheat Street. We thank God for you. We pray his presence will continue to guide you and direct you until we meet again. God bless.
that the Lord Jesus, on the night he was betrayed, he took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, this is my body which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me. Why don't you go ahead and grab your elements and let us now remember Jesus together. Why don't you go ahead and take the bread which signifies his broken body and the cup which signifies his shed blood. Let us now eat and drink together. Amen and amen. Once again, we have come to the conclusion of this worship experience. And I know that something has been sang, prayed, or preached will bless and carry you a little further along your way. We pray that you have a blessed week and now may the grace of God and the sweet communion of his Holy Spirit rest, rule, and abide with each of you until we meet again. Amen and bless God. Amen.